after a short drive up from the much warmer Barcelona, Chris and I, armed with two Canon EOS Rs, have made our way to the beautiful land of Andorra, where we have incredible snow, mountain tops, beautiful scenery, and we're going to be seeing what these can do for video and stills over the next couple of days. I know there's already a load out there about the specs, but we want to see just how usable they are in the real world. It's incredibly early here and very, very cold. We're now heading out with the EOS Rs up to the other side of Andorra, where we're hoping we're going to see a fantastic sunrise. So we made our way up here this morning and conditions have deteriorated quite dramatically to the point where we, we had to turn around because we physically couldn't see. We lost the road, there was way too much snow, it wasn't worth the risk. So we came down the mountain just a little bit in the hopes of getting any sort of view. Um, and this was looking slightly promising. Actually, the wind, as I'm talking, is just blowing some of the snow out the way and you can start to see um, a big mountain behind me which is covered in sort of furs and snow. The touch bar works with gloves, which is nice. Um, I'm going to put the lens hood round. I know you can use these control rings at the front of the lenses now. The native lenses have these control rings which you can program to do different things. Uh, but ISO wise, I just like it on my thumb. So I've put it on the touch bar and I've got these gloves on and it, it works perfectly fine. Um, all the dials are pretty easy to feel in gloves as well. And actually, does the touch screen. Touch screen is not as good as using just your finger, but if you've got gloves with the touch sensitive ends, then you should be able to use your touch screen as well for moving around your point, your AF point. So let's see what we can get here. Obviously the EOS R has a huge number of AF points um, and I'm using currently the touch and drag settings, which are actually very customizable. You can set them to the right side of the screen. You can have them off if you don't want to be using that in case a lot of people find they move the point with their nose as they look through the viewfinder. But you can just have it set as the top corner, which is what I've got at the moment. So I can lift this to my face and I can move the AF point around just by using my thumb in the top corner of the screen. Now that's working pretty well. Um, and it is a substitute for a joystick. I know there will be some people who will still prefer that manual control that you can feel, especially, I, and I can understand it when you're wearing gloves. It is a lot more, um, feels a lot more usable when you have a joystick there. But it, it is working in the top right of the screen, so I can't, I can't complain about it. Knackering, isn't it? Walking in snow. Oh, I'm done. Been here two hours. <laughs> this landscape's quite unforgiving in terms of composition today. It's quite hard to find something that isn't quite messy because there's just so much going on. But there's a nice little bit of snow here with just some water trickling in through, which is quite pretty. Okay, so I'm currently set up next to this raging river below me um, and Chris is going to jump over it so that I can test the burst rate of the EOS R. So I think we can get eight frames per second on this. Um, we don't really need continuous focus because I know exactly where he's going to be. We've already planned out the shot. So Chris, whenever you're ready, you go ahead and jump. <laughs> oh my god, there he is. Full action Chris. I can't wait to pop that up on screen. <laughs> we're just on our way to another location and we were coming back down the valley that we drove this morning, which when we drove it was pitch black and full of fog. Um, and we've just come around the corner and just seen this absolutely stunning vista. Um, I've got the 50 mil still on from when I was using it up the top. And uh, actually, although I'm going to stick the 24-105 on as well, just to get something a little bit wider, it's actually incredible to see this landscape with a shallow depth of field, because I've stuck the aperture right down um, and just been sort of taking advantage of these trees we've got right behind me. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of a play here and a bit of an experiment just to see what works.
We've headed up to one of the Val Nord resorts, Pal Aransal, I think it's called. And it's so empty here. It's actually a little bit eerie. They've got all the snow machines going on the slopes to get it ready. All the places still being built. There's new things being delivered, but it's so empty. And actually, it's a really nice chance to get some images that you just couldn't get if you came here during ski season. The snow has really started coming down now. It is exceedingly pretty. So we've come to this little valley. There's a beautiful little stream. There's a sort of waterfall over there. We're going to try and get some pictures here, which we can because the EOS Rs are weather filled. So that's great. Another really, really good feature. We were just changing lenses sort of in the car, but with the doors open. And this snow is really driving from the side. And normally with mirrorless cameras, when you're changing lenses, you have to be so, so careful. Whereas the EOS R has a really neat little feature. I'm going to turn my back to snow because I'm not that brave. When you take the lens off, you still have your shutter over the sensor itself. So with mirrorless, one of the worst things is that you just constantly have dust on your sensor. It doesn't matter how careful you are. It's just there all the time. So that's a really nice feature on these cameras just to keep them clean a, a lot easier. Sometimes when there's very little around and I've exhausted all other options, Chris makes a nice subject for a picture. <laughs> so especially here, he's wearing a nice black jacket. We can really overexpose the snowy background. Very pretty. Just... Well, I like the contrast. It is a shame about the subject, but the uh... the, the USR looks great. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> I'm using the 50mm at the moment because basically it's got a massive lens hood, and I didn't want snow all over the front of the 24-105. So I'm just trying to find the composition. I mean, it still looks quite pretty, whatever, but. I mean, that's quite nice. I know you're not meant to constantly shoot at 1.2 or f2 or 1.8, any of those low apertures, but I love it. Really isolate that subject. Like the snow is isolating my face. I was actually moaning a little bit off camera earlier to Chris about this screen because I quite like working quickly and Sometimes it's nice to just flip a screen up really, really quickly instead of getting it out, turn it round, or getting the angle you want. And sometimes it's hard to line it up, especially if you happen to use it at an angle. But on the other hand, I also, walking around here, there's lots of rocks. It is nice that you can actually turn the screen in on itself so you can protect it. It's very, very pretty. Oh God, I'm cramping. Be very, very nice for portraits, this lens, really nice. It is large. I mean, there's no doubt in that. It's big for a 50 mil, but it is one two. Half of the size of it right now is its giant lens hood, which is very useful. And um, if it performs, then, you know, you don't always have to worry about the size. Slippery. Slippery. Cool, play it cool. On the Canon website, it does state like ideal working temperatures are down to zero degrees. Now, we, I don't think we've got above zero degrees. It's been way below that and we haven't had any problems with the EOS Rs at all. We haven't had any like lag or anything um, caused by the cold weather. It hasn't been turned on or off or any problems. So I've been really impressed. The LP6 is such a common battery. There's so many about. And also Canon users, if you're coming to this camera or obviously you already have Canon kit and you want to add this body in, it's so nice that you can use the same chargers and same batteries. Because let's face it, that is very annoying when you have to change that up. This morning we actually have a sunrise. We've come all the way up to the top northeastern tip of Andorra like we did on our first day. But unlike our first day, we can see a lot more. The light is stunning. So we're just gonna wait for the sun to properly rise, really bounce off these mountains.
sun's come up quite a bit behind us now. And these peaks in front of us, because of the snow we had yesterday, are very reflective. So they have gone incredibly white. And because the valley is very fur lined, which comes out incredibly dark, um, we've got a huge sort of set of dynamic range here. We finally have some very bright sun and we've decided to go hiking in one of uh, Andorra's national parks. We have finally made it to Ramio. Uh, this is one of the stops on the hike and this will be the last stop because this is so high and we have walked so far and I cannot do any more. Chris could probably manage it but I'm holding him back. So we're here now, the river is next to us, we've come away from it a little bit on our hike so we're going to pop down there, see if there's any nice compositions. Because we've come up a little bit further we've got the snow back again as well. We've lost the sun so we've got a really even light here. There's another eagle flying over. Um, it's really easy to get it with my 105 lens. There are times when you wish you'd carried a 600 mil, but I'm sure on the slope I would have said the opposite thing. But do you have 30 megapixels, so it'd be nice to just crop it in and see if we can just see what bird it was, what vague shape I've managed to capture in the distance. Now that we're nearing the end of this trip, I thought it'd be good to take a couple of minutes out just to tell you guys about my experience shooting video with the EOS R camera. Now, of course, when the specs came out for this camera, to be honest, I wasn't that blown away by it. I thought it was a bit of a letdown. So when I came here to Andorra to shoot with this, really for the first time, I was kind of expecting to hate it. Now, you know, after a few days, that's not really the case. I actually quite like shooting with it. I'll tell you why. But before I do, I just want to address some of the big issues for me. First of all, it's a full frame camera. Great. But when you switch it into 4K, you automatically get a crop mode. It's about 1.7 times crop, so that 24 to 105 obviously shifts. You're shooting at a much longer focal length. So getting wide shots is a bit more of a hassle. But if you plan for it, of course, you, you shoot with wider glass, and obviously you can work around it. It just takes some getting used to. Once you know the limitations, you work with it. Now number two, slow motion. It doesn't really have any capable slow motion features in there. In 4K, you can go up to 30 frames a second. Realistically, you're going to be shooting at 25 in PAL. If you want any slow motion, you have to go down to 1080p, and that's only twice, two times slow motion, 1080, 50 frames a second. If you want what I would consider the first real bit of slow motion, you need to drop down to 720p and you get 100 frames a second in PAL again. But let's face it, guys, who is shooting in 720p in this day and age? Definitely not me anyway. The last one that I want to say is that there's no in-body stabilization in this camera. So when you're shooting with the 24 to 105, this is optically stabilized. So, you know, I can get around that, it's very forgiving. But if you put that 16 to 35 mil lens that isn't optically stabilized or any prime lenses, you are gonna get that micro jitter when you're shooting handheld. So you need to make sure that you're either sticking it on a tripod or using a gimbal or some sort of support that's gonna take away that micro jitter. So that's the bad, let's move on to the good because there are some really good features to this camera too. Now the body, the body is built like a tank. It feels great to hold, it is solid and it is weather sealed. Battery life is very impressive. I've only used two batteries for the full day shoot yesterday filming in 4K. Now, you know, you compare that to some other brands without saying any names, and I'd have, I'd have to use so many more batteries, especially in this cold weather, so a big thumbs up for that as well. I also really like the articulating screen. It's great when you're getting low and high shots, so if you want to do any vlogging, then it's very useful to have, but of course you will need to drop it down into HD to get around that cropping if you are going to do some vlogging, or you have a very, very long hand. Now the big one for me, the Canon Color Science with 4K video capabilities. You know, Canon Color Science it is loved everywhere. It's what Canon are known for, especially in video. So it's wonderful to have that back. Now it's 8-bit internally, but if you stick an external recorder on that, you can record 10-bit. Now what tops that off is having dual pixel autofocus as well. You know, I don't really put a lot of faith in autofocus in any other brands other than the Canon's dual pixel autofocus. And it really does lock on. I've been filming Amy you know, for the majority of this trip. I have been using, I'd probably say 60% of the time, the autofocus. If you've got a Canon Cinema EOS camera, the C100, 200, C300, and this camera is gonna make a very, very good B camera because with that crop in 4K, you basically got a super 35 mil field of view, which is gonna be very similar to what you're shooting on with those cinema cameras. You've got C-Log, and you've also got the ability to record 10-bit externally. So the two are gonna really match very well. 
The good thing about travelling with a videographer is you can be super lazy because they always bring a tripod and they always have ND filters. So I've nicked all Chris's stuff, set up here next to this stream. I've got a little bit of this pool in front of me. I'm going to do a long exposure um, and just see how that looks. I haven't got a remote um, and you don't really need one. I've set it on a self timer of two seconds just so that when I press the shutter, obviously I can take my hands off. It'll be completely still when it starts to take the image. We're back at the apartment now with the EOS Rs after a very long hike today and a very short couple of days in Andorra getting to test them out. And I think we've both really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think I've actually surprised myself at how much I've enjoyed shooting with this camera. It's been a long time since I've shot with sort of, you know, the Canon DSLRs because I wanted to migrate to 4K. So it's very refreshing to have 4K capable camera as that dual pixel autofocus bonus yes. and yeah. also that lovely Canon color science. Yeah, 100%. And the body itself, so well built so customizable. I was a little bit worried first day, as I think was Chris, about a few manual controls that we thought possibly were a little bit lacking. But actually, once you've customized your body, it doesn't feel that way anymore. Yeah, they're super versatile. I mean, I picked up Amy's camera yesterday and she set it up, obviously, how the way she likes to shoot. And things were all messed around and I couldn't actually get to grips with where yeah. things were. You can do it so was, much. It was a no-go. <laughs> so after a few minutes, of course, you get back used to it, but they're just so customizable. You can have it laid out in any way that yeah. you kind of want. And they're so hardy. The ergonomics are great, but they, are, they can just survive anything. Yeah, you've seen where we've been filming and it is cold, it is tiring, we are tired, we look weak and old. <laughs> <laughs> but the cameras look amazing. They look yeah, brand new. They look and, new. You know, I'd like to say that we haven't been sort of like, because these cameras are ours, we haven't been as, let's say, as careful yeah, as we would have been if they fair. were ours for testing purposes, obviously. Yes, professional purposes. Yeah, and they have withstand, withstand, withstood pretty much everything that we've thrown at them, apart from that rock on the lens, but I'm sorry, Canon. Yeah. No, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. <laughs> They've been through everything. I mean, we've had so much snow. Yesterday yeah. was appalling. It was this morning minus eight i yeah. think we got down to and we just had no loss of functionality everything was working fine my finger had frozen so much i couldn't use the screen but it did actually work when i put gloves on so it wasn't the camera's fault you know it's they were doing way better than we were oh, and that, yeah. that is impressive Without you know but of course we can only fit in so much information in this video because we only have you for a short period of time because you're so fickle you keep going elsewhere stay here <laughs> stay with us why do you want to leave us but anyway if you do have any questions do pop them in the comment section and we will get back to you yeah there's so much information on our website as well you can check out all the lenses canon's range or give us an email give us a call or as chris says put a comment below and we'll try and get you all the information that you need all the information thanks for watching see ya